All right, let's look at some uh, ground-based mobility drills that you could use. These are not jujitsu specific, but they're jujitsu appropriate or jujitsu related. They're going to help you with your weight control, your balance, and your hip-to-hip -hip transfer mobility. So starting from the knees, you can tuck one shoulder and look away and roll over that shoulder, landing in what we call the ready position. It looks like this. I rest my hand here on my bent leg, the other foot tucks, and then my hand is six to eight inches from my hip. I can reverse that position by rolling over the shoulder. I always look towards the direction I'm rolling, right, when I go back, and I stretch the opposite leg. Since this leg is already up, we're going to go over this shoulder and stretch this leg, and then land in the posted knee position, right? Here we go, look, stretch, one knee is down, the other leg is posted, right? Here you can sit on the heel, or you can use your hands to imagine that you're grabbing something almost like a, a rowing motion. You can pull your hip forward and sit up, right? And so to get this stretch here, open up your thoracic cavity. You can even put your hands up and then sit back down, right? From here, if you'd like to sit back to the ready position, you take your weight off your heel, and then just move your foot under and sit. Right. If you'd like to move forward, so imagine that we're in this posted knee position here, and the hips are up, and you'd like to move forward, you can continue to drive the knee to the ground. But you want to create a little counterbalance back here with this foot, so maybe you just change the angle not uh, across, but north and south. And as you continue forward, you can drop your knee and then switch the position. Right, something like this. So remember, from here, you can raise up and tuck the foot. It's movable right, for balance. And if you'd like to sit, you tuck and sit back down to the ready position. And if you'd like to move forward, you pull yourself up Continue driving, change the foot here. Change the foot out, continue to drive, and then sit the other way, right? Like this. And we know from here, you can stretch the posted leg so that you roll over the shoulder by looking in the same direction and landing here. And then from here, you can reverse the direction and tuck the leading arm back to the ready position again. Now from this ready position, you can switch the hips to a double leg or to a double bent hip stretch, right? So you swing your arms in the direction you'd like to roll. As you do, you create some momentum and the hip of the bent leg will naturally sort of touch the ground, right? And you don't want to fall all the way over. We're not doing a side break fall. You'd like to roll over the hip, and before you fall, you stretch this leg as a counterbalance and then keep it bent behind you. So as you turn, you roll on the hip and then just stretch the leg. And see, both arms tuck like this, and I can lean over my forward leg. Don't tuck the heel here too much, because when the leg is forward, you don't have enough counterbalance and you end up falling. We don't want this, right? We want the leg here at 90 degrees to the body. And we're just in this half bent position. The arms are tucked here. If you'd like to stretch the back leg, you can start to walk the knee underneath and then stretch the leg away from you. Sometimes you need your hands to balance you for this. So you can hold your leg or hold the ground. And look, just start to walk the leg like this, right? And you can sit up tall and sit your hips down, and that stretches the hip. Let's look at that from the side. So we're in this ready position, and we swing our legs around, right, until we tuck. And this is at 90 degrees. And if we'd like to stretch the back leg, we can start to stretch a little bit, maybe find some balance here with our hands, walk the knee back and then hold our leg in place 
for some balance and then sit the hips down. Right? It's almost like a half split. The better you get at this, or the more you do this, of course, the more comfortable you become. If you'd like to stretch the forward hip, you take your hands and walk them over and put your chest down on your leg. Right? And then you can return to normal just by sitting on the hip and bend the leg and you're back in your initial tuck position. From that position, right, from the half, from the half turned double bent position, you can switch to the other side by creating a momentum in the opposite way. You take the hands and you swing them here, right? And as you do, you let the legs open and follow. The only way to do this is to make minimal friction. So you want minimal contact. That means that you want to move on your hip. As I start to swing, look, my weight goes on this hip, right? And then I have to open this leg. And now I transfer the weight from this hip to the other hip so that the legs are free to move, right? Now full speed, it looks like this, right? And we land and then we switch. But really what's happening is you're just transferring the weight hip to hip, hip to hip. And then as you move, you're putting your legs behind you. And you're tucking the arms because that's where they would have landed from the momentum. Right? And we know that you can stretch the back leg and sit down into it. Or you can lean over the front if you'd like to get a, a more decent stretch on this hip. Right? Now that's the half hip roll, right? Where the legs are both bent. If you'd like to move all the way, you transfer the weight to one hip. And then as you lead with the opposite leg, you allow the second leg to follow, right, all the way down. And from here, this is your base, so you can stretch yourself up. Drop your hips, arch your back, and look up. Right, and then you can go back down to this prone position. If you'd like to bring the legs out to the front again, you can go either way. Let's go back the way we came from. So my legs are stuck because the weight is heavy. So I open up the side that I'm going to by transferring my weight to this hip, right? And now I can lead with my bottom leg and rotate. Look, I'm on this hip, and as I come to the front, I square them again, right? So I rock a little bit on the hip to make this side light. I have to open the weight on the side that I'm moving to. As I go here, I come face down. And I can stretch here if I like. And if I want to go back that way, then I roll on the hip and bring my legs around to the front again. It works both ways. Transfer the weight to the hip and go. If you'd like, you can stretch. You don't have to. And then transfer the weight back to the hip and sit forward, right? Now, you don't have to go only the way you came from. You can work yourself in a full 360 degree rotation. So you transfer the weight, and you switch, and then transfer the weight again, and switch to come back to center, right? And the same thing's happening. You're just rocking the weight here, and then rocking the weight on the other side. Whatever side you rock becomes heavy, and that means the other side is light. So if I want to move this way, I have to change the weight here first, right? So those are some basic movements. You can also rock on the back without rolling over entirely. Right? You can rock tightly where you pull the knees into the chest and rock. And this gives you a chance to roll because you're already compact. So there's less to move. So if I want to roll from here, I just stretch one leg and I end up over the opposite shoulder, right? Very easily because I'm tight, I'm like a small compressed ball, right? Easy. If I want to be a little longer and stretch, then I can rock, but I open my hands and let them hit the mat, right? And then sit up and see my feet are farther away from my butt, my knees are not pulled into my chest, they're open. And the idea here is that I get a little mobility and comfortability with my diaphragm and lungs compressed but I'm still movable, I'm still mobile, right? From here, when my, when my hands hit the mat like this, I let my feet drop, 
until my toes land in my palms. You don't want to grab here. You're not just doing this. Right? You want the hands all the way to the back. And when they're flat, then your hips, look, your hips follow. Your hips come up and follow. And when the hips are as high as they can go, then you drop the legs, right? So you stretch and just let the feet hit. It's all hip movement. That's all. And of course, because you're rocking, you can sit up. And as you sit up, you can pull yourself to this posted position and sit back down, where you start to combine these movements now that you know. Another drill you can do for hip mobility is to lay on your back. It's nice if your head and shoulders are a little bit rounded and off the mat, and you start to move your leg in an outward circle like this. Just get used to that feeling, right? Try it with the other leg, too. Draw a circle with your foot. Out. Out. Now, if you can do it with both feet at the same time, you get this effect. Okay, what's important to note is that you don't do this with your hips stationary. If you put a lot of tension into this area, as you move your legs, you're just going to be like this, and you're going to be stuck. And that rigidity that you create in your legs and your hips is ideal for someone to control you and then use to pass your guard. In order for your guard to remain effective, your hips have to be mobile and light. So when you're swinging your legs like this in these opposite circles, what's happening is your hips are moving. That's what should be going on, right? And you do this and you create the momentum. See, there I had to use my hands to hold myself still, right? But I don't need my hands when I use my legs because the momentum that I'm creating from circling my legs allows my hips to shift. This only works if you're willing to relax that area of your body. So breathe into it, exhale all the negative tension out, do whatever you need to do to move it, and then you'll be able to become a little mobile like this. This is nice. Right? Just get the hips going back and forth. If you want to practice hip mobility because you're not comfortable with the leg circle drill yet, you can just keep your hands on the ground and bounce your hips up and down. When I do this, it's not this. I'm not pumping my legs, right? My hips only are moving. I'm rocking up and back down. I'm lifting my hips and putting them back down, right? And that's the motion that you're naturally creating, this slight bounce but you're doing it with the leg circle, right? And of course, you can go and make circles in, too. Draw the circle in, 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 right, like that. And you put it together, and it makes the same motion. OK, sometimes when you're rocking, you may rock, and you may sit yourself up and pull yourself here and then continue with your hands. And you end up, look, stretching one, and then the opposite leg follows, and you're ending up in the alligator position. Right? You can walk like this, opposite hand, opposite foot. Go backwards, it's the same thing. Right? Opposite hand, opposite foot. All right? From this position, you're going to see one leg is bent, and one leg is stretched. The stretched leg is mobile. It's already long, and you're going to move it through this space. So take the hand out of the way, and then sit the leg through. Right? This drill is called four corners. Look again, the hips are light here. Right? That same space that I created backwards, I now create from this face up position. My opposite leg goes to my opposite hand. I want this foot to go where this hand is. So that means I have to put all my weight here and here. And I open up a space. I open up a path right there for my leg to go. Right? That's it. Make sense? OK? So now you combine all of these movements, right? You may start like this, 
and you may switch your feet a little bit to get your hip mobility going. And then you start to stretch here, and then you drop, and you come back up. And now we're going to go all the way, right? So we're belly down, and we stretch here, and then we come out the other way, and we can stretch here, and then we start to roll tight. And as we roll, we stretch the leg, and we go, right? And we can sit up, and then tuck back and roll. And we sit this way, and pull. And now we sit back and we start to make the circles with our hips, right? And then as we sit up to this position, we go all the way forward and end up in the alligator. And we walk a little bit and then sit through and then back. And now we can walk the other way. Right? And maybe even from here we can roll. And, so, and you just keep going and combining these basic movements. Tight roll, long roll, bent leg hip switch, full leg hip switch transferring the weight side to side, putting together something that's creative and makes you feel like you're moving, all right? And there's a lot more, but that's a nice start.